Hello statistics students, this is Todd Daniel, and I'm doing this quick one-off video about the applied portion of our final exam test. Uh, this is, uh, I'm sure the sound quality is not great, I'm not reading off a script, I just want to hit some highlights of things that might be helpful for you for the test. Uh, so you'll notice, I think, a difference in the production quality, uh, but the information will probably do you a lot of good. So let's start with that. Uh, let me set this up. I have a copy of the test for answer sheet. That's where you're getting the items that you'll be using for the applied section. And then I'll also be flipping back and forth to this Z tool multi tool, sorry, Z test multi tool. Uh, this is the edited version where I just cut out the tabs that you don't need. So it's a, a truncated or shortened version of uh, the larger version of this multi-tool. We'll just be using the Z formula and the Z test on this one. And then I also have the uh, multi-tool for t-tests. And again, I've just cut out all of the tabs except for critical values and the uh, two, the t-table for two tailed tests. Uh, those are the only ones that we need for this example. Let's go back to our answer sheet. Uh, basically, where do you find or where should you go in these sheets to answer these items? Uh, number one is all about using the Z formula. And so the obvious place to go for that would be the Z multi-tool, and you'll be using the Z formula section. I think you'll find one, two, four, and five to be the tables that you need for that first item. Look a little more closely at the what is what you're given, and you'll know exactly where to plug those in. Next, we have a researcher who knows a population standard deviation, sample size, sample mean, and then we have this hypothesis. What does that 15 mean in the context of a z-test? So those four elements will be necessary to answer this next question, and for that, just go to the z-test tab. You can enter. Population mean, sample mean, sample size, standard deviation. Let's just, I'll throw some numbers in. Uh, population mean of uh, 50, sample mean of 45, sample size of 100, uh, standard deviation 15. Okay, so here's a Z test, negative 3, 3. Uh, down here, I get my actual critical values. Over here, I get probabilities. So for the Z of 333, it's a probability of 0, 0, 0, 0, 9. But I also have uh, just one more hint right here. Two-tailed test is significant. One-tailed test is significant. Uh, let me play around with this. Let's make the standard deviation a 5. See what that, oh, that went the wrong one. Let's make it a 30. Okay, so now I have a two-tailed test that is not significant, but a one-tailed test that is significant. There's my probability for the two-tailed test for the one-tailed test. So if we go back here, we have two-tailed test, 0.05. Uh, here's one with an alpha of 0 0.10. Well, I can change that up here, 0 0.10. So I can change my level of significance here, and that will translate through these other places on this tab. Okay, so there's two-tailed test, one-tailed test, levels of significance, good. Uh, population has a mu of 22, it's population mean, standard deviation is 10, given a sample size of 50, compute the p-value for the following sample means using a two-tailed test. So I'll use 0 0.05, and I would just plug in these values. So there's my mu, standard deviation, sample size, plug those in, and I'm going to be getting probabilities in this box right over here. What else? Students' t distribution table. So I'll be using a different uh, multi-tool for this one. I have alpha, degrees of freedom, and tails. Let's go to the t-test table. This will be using critical values. I, and you can also use this section right here. Um, I, that which is exactly the same as we have right here. I'll just use this one because it's handy. Um, so we have an alpha of 0 0.05 degrees of freedom. Just plug that in. So if I plug in any degrees of freedom, um, 43, there's my critical value for a one or two tailed test. If I need a one tailed test, I change that to a one. If I need to change my alpha level, change that to a 0 0.1. 
4.01 or any other alpha level, and there's my critical value. So that's what this is asking for, find those critical values. For proportions, we're going to go back to the Z table, or Z test, Z multi-tool, uh, go to the Z formula, and proportions are right down here. Uh, what do we have? We have a population proportion, a sample size, and a sample proportion. So here's how we would plug those in. Uh, population proportion of a 0.66 and a sample size of, of a 34. As soon as you enter those two, you're going to get these values right here. We'll come back to those. And if I enter the sample probability, I'll put it over here. It's a point, uh, 0.321. Let's make it a little different. So we just went 0.5 maybe. Get some actual probabilities to read. Okay. Expected value of P. There you go. Standard error. Are out there. P less than would be right here. And then when you get to this, population proportion, sample size for each of these. So I'd plug in a 0.68, which I'll just do right here since I'm not using the same values as what you guys have. There's a 6, 8, and it's asking for the probability. It's just that value right there. And then if is the this uh, sample probability statistically significant, is it less than 0 0.05? Uh, and then we get into the uh, examples from JASP, and all of those I've made separate videos for. Okay, well, I hope that this is helpful to you. Uh, as always, you guys can uh, send me an email if you need, uh, but hopefully there will not be as many emails because I've answered a lot of the questions that have come up already. Wish you guys the best, and I will see you in class or online.